Hello, my name's Stephen and I make running videos. And in order to make my running videos, I currently use this. It's the GoPro Fusion 360 camera. A lens on both sides captures the entire scene around me and I found it to be absolutely fantastic. However, recently into my possession came this little fellow. This is the new Insta360 ONE X. It's the new version of the Insta camera. The previous one was the Insta 361. So we've just added an X on the end, really. I have spent literally minutes, certainly a few minutes, playing with this toy. And here's my review of the Insta 361 X. So let's start with one or two things I actually like about the Insta 361 X. It is light. For me, I'm carrying this camera around during marathons, during ultras, long distance races over a long period of time. Now, sometimes I can put my camera in my backpack, but more often than not, I just carry it in my hand, I hold it in my hand. And having something that's light is really important to me. This is really light compared to the GoPro Fusion. You can see that the handle is thicker. It's a weightier, more rugged feeling piece of equipment, whereas this, feels much lighter and easier to hold in the hand. That's a good and a bad thing, I suppose, because in a way that the lightness of it makes it feel more flimsy, although it's quite well built, you know, it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart on me, but it, it does feel a bit lightweight in more ways than one, if that makes any sense. I like the look of it. I think it looks pretty decent. It's slim, which is important. You see the, um, Fusion here is pretty thick really and bulky and that's quite difficult to fit in my backpack especially if it's packed with other stuff. I also like that the selfie stick is long. It's so long it's not going to fit on the screen here. Hang on a second let me see if I can get it. look I can get it all in the frame there. I like the fact that it's long. This is the selfie stick for the Fusion. You can see it is much shorter. I hadn't really considered the length of the selfie stick to be a big issue, uh, but I guess you could have more possibility for more interesting shots given the extra length of the selfie stick on the One X. So what else do I like? I like the grip. It's comfortable. It's not too fat. Looking at the GoPro Fusion, the, uh, the selfie stick is quite fat and sometimes that is a little bit difficult to hold. Uh, whereas this is much more as I would expect a selfie stick to be much thinner and uh, it's kind of easier to grip. It's great that the 361 X has a removable battery, very important for me again, so I can take spare batteries with me. It's quite good that I only need to carry one SD card or like one and a spare one. Um, it's a bit of a faff with the GoPro Fusion that it uses two SD cards, so I've got to carry two SD cards and two spare SD cards. There's twice as much that can go wrong there as well, which is also an issue. But the problem with that, of course, is that you don't get as much storage space on the One X that you do on the Fusion. You can store a lot more on the Fusion than on this. And that is about it for the things I like about the Insta360 One X. Here's a few things I don't like. First of all, this little screen here. It's, yeah, it's brilliant that it has a screen. Whoopie doo that it has a screen, okay? But you can't see it in bright sunlight. You cannot see it. It's fine indoors. I can see it now. I don't know if you can see it if I hold it up to the camera there. It's quite clear indoors. That's not a problem, okay? But in bright sunlight, in any kind of bright light, it disappears. I'm, I'm squinting to see what's going on, which makes it very lucky that the green light flashes on and off when you're recording. Otherwise, I'd have absolutely no idea whether I was recording or not. Also, the sound isn't loud enough. If you're outside, where there are people around, there's traffic, there's a general hubbub, you cannot hear, especially in the wind, you cannot hear the sound on this turning on or off or telling you any instructions whatsoever. So let's try a little audio experiment. I'm gonna press record on the Fusion, and then I'm gonna press record on the Insta 361X. Got that name as well. You can't call it the Insta360 because there's already an Insta360. You can't really call it a One X because that isn't specific enough. I mean, if I just call that the Fusion, that's fine, isn't it? GoPro Fusion, that's pretty quick. Insta360 One X, it has to be all of that stuff to make sense. 
Anyway, okay, here we go with the audio test. So I'm going to press record on the GoPro Fusion. Right. Beep, beep, beep. Not massively loud, but you know, loud enough. Let's do this one. There we are. It's now recording, and let's stop it recording. You can hear it perfectly all right in this nice, quiet environment, but outdoors, you just can't hear that at all. Whereas the GoPro, there's a harshness to the sound of the GoPro on off. And it gives you an absolute definite di -di 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 -di. it tells you I've stopped recording. The other thing I don't like, the selfie stick. OK, the selfie stick is nice and long. That's great. Look at how easy it is for me to open and lock the selfie stick on the GoPro Fusion. Ready? Here we go. I grab the camera. Look. Done. Solid as a rock. Closed. OK, if I'm running, then I need that to be quick. I need it to be secure. Let's see if I can do similar. Thing. Well, I can't do a similar thing. I know I can't do a similar thing with this. The reason being, when I grab the camera and twist, it actually starts unscrewing the thread. So let's screw the thread back on. I don't want to over tighten the thread. because I don't want to damage the camera or the selfie stick. So I can't really do that because it just unscrews the camera. So I have to grab I have to grab that bit there. And then to tighten up again, I can grab, I suppose I can grab the camera there and then we're done. Let's, then I can't close it again easily because again, I start unscrewing the selfie stick. So I have to grab that bit. It's, it's just a bit more awkward. I have to get my hand out of the way quick because I'll trap it in there if I don't. And tightening it up is all right. That's okay. It's just more fiddly. It's more fiddly. And actually, that's the thing about this camera. Everything is just more fiddly, more irritating and annoying. I don't like this pouch. This pouch kind of doesn't fit properly. I want it to, I want it to cover. I want it to cover the Insta360 One X. But it kind of doesn't. So it feels like it's too small. So it doesn't cover it. It seems like the idea with this pouch is that you would kind of wear it like that and walk around on your holiday like this, you know, um, and then and then take it out, maybe, and then screw it onto the selfie stick like that. And then away you go and then you finish and you unpack it and you put it back. That's not what I'm going to be doing. I am constantly going to have it on the selfie stick. I'm not taking it off the selfie stick. Um, unless it unscrews itself and falls off. I may as well just take this off. That can just go somewhere else. And also, I feel like if I if I dropped that on concrete, on stone or rocks, it's I feel like it would still break the lens inside. Whereas, by contrast, the case for the GoPro Fusion is a hard case. It's a hard case. It goes round and it zips up. Problem with this one is I use it so often, I use it all the time, the zip has actually now broken. So both of them kind of fail a bit, really. But at least if I dropped this, I'm pretty sure that the lenses would be OK. In fact, I have dropped it before and the lenses were fine. So I think that's it for the things I like and dislike about the kind of functionality, uh, the aesthetics. Um, the look, the feel of the selfie stick and the camera itself. Now let's get on to the software and the video. The Insta360 ONE X shoots 5.7K maximum resolution video. The GoPro Fusion shoots 5.2K maximum resolution video. I used to own a Garmin Verb 360 camera and that shot 5.7k video and it was horrible. I used it for one running video and I was so disappointed with the footage I never used the camera again. So to me resolution makes absolutely no difference. I don't care 
what the resolution is of a 360 camera. What I care about is how it looks when I film something. Look, the video footage that you get off this little camera is fine. It's okay, all right? It's not as good as the GoPro Fusion, simple as that. No arguments, it isn't as good. But you can get decent enough footage out of this camera. The problem is getting it out of the camera. So with the GoPro Fusion, I shoot in ProTune, which is a flat format. There's no color grading at all. It's, it looks pretty bland when it comes out of the camera. That gives you more scope in post-production for adding color and for adding contrast. And ProTune is much like what's called log file on here. It's supposed to be a flat color grade to give you more room for processing after the fact. So what I do with the ProTune files is I take them off the SD cards in the camera, I load them onto my computer, and then I use a program called GoPro Fusion Studio to stitch the files together. That takes ages, but at least when it's finished stitching, I get out of it a ProRes file. That ProRes file is a high quality file that I can use in Final Cut Pro 10. I cannot do that with this. Yes, you can take the files off the camera and you can load them onto your computer. And then much like the GoPro Fusion, you have to load the files into Insta's own editing program, which is called Insta Studio Beta. So it is a beta program granted. And then you stitch the files in that program. Again, the same as with the GoPro Fusion. The problem is the stitched file is then exported as an MP4 file. So that MP4 file is not the original footage, it's compressed. So I'm not getting the full quality that I want from my Insta360 camera on my desktop or my laptop video editing suite. So let me just briefly take you through my workflow for the GoPro Fusion and see how it compares to the Insta360 ONE X. So I take the battery out of the GoPro Fusion. I take micro SD card number one, out of the GoPro Fusion, I put it in micro SD card adapter, like so, and I pop it in my laptop. And then what I do is I create a folder. So I'll create a new folder, I just call it test, and then we just wait for that to copy over. So once that's done, we then need to do the back lens. So we'll have two folders, a front and a back folder for the GoPro Fusion footage. Put the card back in, put the battery back in, and I'm done with the camera itself. And now we need to get our files stitched using the GoPro Fusion Studio software. Movies, test, and then once we've clicked on the test folder, we just click open and GoPro Fusion Studio should find all the files, load them all in. So I'm gonna select all the files and I'm gonna just click on settings. And I don't want any color correction to be applied by GoPro. I'm going to apply my own color correction. So I'm going to click on flat profile here. Once I've done that, I add the files to the render queue. So bottom right here, add to the render queue. And I want the footage to be rendered in ProRes, which is a format that Final Cut Pro X uh, likes and can use. So I'm changing it from Cineform to ProRes. And then we just click render all. I have actually deleted a couple of files that I don't need. So we're just gonna render one of the files. And then all we do is wait for it to stitch. Now, this is one of the problems with the GoPro Fusion. It just takes ages to stitch. So while we wait for the GoPro Fusion footage to stitch together, we need to get the footage off this little fella here. Now this should be uh, easier. Um, it, it is a little bit easier. We take a USB cable, we plug the mini USB cable into there. And then we plug the larger USB in there like that. And then we need to load up Insta Studio Beta. So we select the footage that we want and we just simply drag it in to the Insta360 Studio and drop it. What should happen is that the image should appear there and we should be able to do some editing and render it out but we get nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. It's a shame, uh, they will sort it out. The thing is it does actually work properly on a PC. You can see the picture and it kind of works on here. Even though I can't see the picture, I know the footage is there. 
And all I want to do with this is export it so I can edit it in a different program. So I'm going to click this button here and click OK. So now we've got the GoPro Fusion footage, which is rendering out, and we've got the Insta 361X footage, which is rendering out. But essentially, we just need to leave them now to get on with their work and render the footage so that we can have a look at it in the editing program that we want to use. So it's literally two days later now. I spent the first day basically just waiting for the software to render out the footage from both cameras. So we had the footage from the Insta361X being rendered out by the Insta Studio Beta software, which is not the best software in the world at all. And then we had the GoPro Fusion footage being rendered out by the GoPro Fusion Studio software, which when it came out was terrible as well, but has improved with various releases since then. The Insta actually did take an awful long time, much longer than I thought it would, to render out the footage. The files produced are 360 equirectangular files. I imported them into Final Cut Pro 10 like you would with any other footage, and I created a 1080p project, and my plan was obviously to render out the footage as flat 1080p, not 360 video. So let's have a look at the footage I shot using both those two cameras. It has been colour corrected to my own preferences. You may like something different, but that's just the way it is, isn't it? So I'm not even going to compare the sound quality of these two cameras. The GoPro Fusion sound is way better without a shadow of a doubt than the Insta360 X. The Insta360 cannot handle wind noise and just sounds altogether far worse. Um, I could also dip these cameras in the water. Um, the Insta361X would die and the GoPro Fusion would be absolutely fine. You can of course buy a, a waterproof housing for the Insta361X, but that's more money isn't it? It's a very dull overcast day here on the south coast of the UK, um, but look at the contrast. Both of these cameras are shooting in their raw mode, so log mode as it's called on the Insta361X and ProTune flat profile on the GoPro Fusion. Um, but look at the contrast, look at the detail, what can you see? Can you see um, clouds? Can you see good blacks? Um, but look at the contrast, look at the detail, what can you see? Can you see um, clouds? Can you see good blacks? Can you see good highlights and good shadow detail? Can you see good highlights and good shadow detail? I've got the sun right in front of me now over the sea um, that's just trying to poke through the clouds but not doing a very good job. I've got the sun right in front of me now over the sea um, that's just trying to poke through the clouds but not doing a very good job. How detailed is the pier over there in the distance? How detailed is the pier over there in the distance? Because I'm a runner, um, I need to know that these cameras are going to be stable, so let's just jog up to the top here. And let's clamber over these rocks here without dropping the camera or breaking the lenses. Both of these cameras, if you drop them on the rocks, the lenses will smash. It's the same for both of them. And there you go, that's it, not doing any more. And there you go, that's it, not doing any more. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that the Insta360 footage looks better, aren't you? Well, all right, I admit to you that the Insta360 footage is better than I expected it to be, but I actually like the GoPro Fusion footage better, and I'll tell you why. Look at the skin tone on my face. Let's see if we can just show you another bit of the video again. It's a very long thing with these cameras. Right. The so there's the 1X the footage. And just, just look at my face, look at the skin worse. tone on my face. 
Um, now look I could also there. dip these cameras in I the water. I think that looks much more um, natural. The Insta 360 now look at the pebbles on the floor. Now, you might argue that the pebbles yeah, look fine. sharp on the Insta 360 footage, but I just think it looks like it's over sharpened. And actually, the GoPro Fusion footage looks more natural. It's a very dull, overcast day here on the south coast of the UK. So there we are, that's the workflow for editing footage from the GoPro Fusion and from the Insta360 ONE X on a computer. Now I don't think Insta want you to do that. Certainly at the moment the Insta Studio Beta software is not ready. Certainly on a Mac it's not ready and there are lots more things that they can add to the functionality of it on a PC as well to make it more user friendly. There's no plans for Final Cut Pro yet, but certainly for Premiere in the next few weeks or months possibly, there will be a plugin so you don't have to render out MP4 files and then load them into your software of choice. You will be able to edit the log files directly in Premiere. What Insta want you to do is to edit the footage on your phone. So I've done that as well. So here we are on my iPhone and I'm just going to click on the Insta360 ONE X app and load it up. And you can see I've got some footage here shot in the sunshine. So let's just load one of the clips up. Now call me old fashioned, but I like to look at video on my phone in landscape mode. It's how your TV works. Your TV's in landscape. I'm not a fan of portrait mode. So I would turn my phone sideways. So let's just have a look here. Sideways mode. That's more like it. And I want to edit like that as well, but unfortunately, the Insta software does not allow me to edit my footage because I'm sideways in landscape um, mode like this. So I have to turn it portrait mode up and edit that way, which means a smaller screen, so less detail for me to see. I can't see enough of what's going on because the screen's so small to edit well. But I don't suppose Insta are particularly worried about that. They're not targeting pro video editors here. As I said at the beginning of this video, Really, the Insta360 ONE X is more of a toy than a serious tool. But that doesn't mean you can't get decent results out of it by any means. So we're stuck with editing in portrait mode. Now, there are a few different options for you to choose from in order to edit this footage. Um, you can just edit it as 360 footage to view in a VR headset or whatever. But as before, we're going to do flat 1080p footage. So we're going to reframe the footage as we go. Insta call uh, reframing free capture mode. And you can edit using a pivot point placed in different points throughout the footage. Or you can use smart track, which follows a particular point that you specify. Or you can use your phone to literally move around the scene using the accelerometer in the phone to highlight various parts of the scene. So let, that's the most fun bit, actually. So let's do that, shall we? Because I, I quite like that. So we press viewfinder and we get a little red button there now. The red button allows us to create a mini planet, so we can go like that, look. But to reframe the footage, to capture different parts of the scene, we need to literally move around. So I'm going to do that now. So if I hold the red button, it will automatically start recording. And it's off. So we need to follow me, but now I'm going to turn around and capture my son there on his bike. And then we'll come back to me here. And then I'm going to turn around again and there's my daughter on her bike. So we keep her in the frame by moving around there like that. So this is actually quite fun. And then I can create a little tiny planet look. And then we'll move back out here. And back around again. Now we'll just follow me. So that's quite fun. Uh, but it's not very precise. I mean, if I was doing an edit, I would want much more precision over exactly where the frame is going. That It's a bit haphazard to just move your phone around to get the shot that you want. But for something quick and easy, it's fun. So now let's put some pivot points in so you can see how that works. So pivot points. So let, we have one there. And then let's press play. And then let's say we now need to reframe it and put a pivot point here because we want to keep my eye on me here. That's another pivot point. Right now we're going to reframe again and have my son in the center there. Pivot point there. 
carry on again. We can put as many pivot points in as we want. So let's say I just want to focus on the feet there. So put them in the middle and stick another point there. Move on a bit. We definitely want to change that. So let's go to there and put a pivot point in there. So now if we go back and play the footage, it will automatically move to those pivot points as the scene goes on. Again, that's quite fun, but you're not going to get the precision that you would have on a computer using Final Cut Pro or Premiere. But it's fun and it gets a job done. So lastly, let's look at Smart Track. Let's follow me on the bike here. So we'll click the little man again. The crosshairs there tell you what we're going to focus on. So it looks like we're focusing on my stomach at the moment. So let's try that. That's exactly where it's focusing. But that's not bad because it keeps it in the middle of the frame. And when we're finished, we can just press stop track. So that's useful if you want to follow some action and you don't want the camera panning away anywhere else. Major problems with this app are that when you're editing, there's no sound. So you've no way of knowing, say you wanted to do a hyperlapse, you've no way of knowing if somebody's talking or if there's something going on that you need to be hearing in the final edit, because it won't allow you to hear any sound at all. What you have to do is you have to render the footage out, see if it worked. If not, you have to go back into the app and redo it, which is terribly time consuming and annoying. You are able to do something called hyperlapse, which is basically speed up the footage. So if we go into edit mode here, I can choose uh, 16 times hyperlapse and then I drag. Whichever way you want, that, that way might be helpful to create your hyperlapse. But I can't play that hyperlapse. It won't play until I render the footage out. So I don't know what it looks like until I've rendered it out. And then if it's wrong, I've got to go back in and do it all again. Seems stupid to me. If we go into settings up here, there is a LUT that you can choose. So if you take that off, the footage looks flatter, no color correction going on. If we add the LUT, that does add some color correction to the footage. However, you can also add some edits. So if I go into filter here, you can see I can add some different color correction by way of filters here, much like you would get on Instagram or something like that. You can also adjust the color temperature, the contrast. So you have got some tools for color correction, color grading on a basic level. You can also trim your footage so you can trim the beginning and the end. What you can't do is load various clips in and edit them all together. To do that, you have to export each individual clip that you've shot out of the Insta app and edit in a different app. So iMovie or LumaFusion or Premiere Rush, something like that. Again, very time consuming, very annoying. I mean, it may be that they change this in the future so you can load various different pieces of footage in and edit them all together. But again, I think what Insta are trying to get you to do is to just film one piece of footage, one shot and edit that and send it to Facebook or Instagram really quickly. It is not a tool for the professional. It is not even a tool for the keen amateur. It's a tool for fun. It's a tool for the family. It's a tool for people on holiday. It's just a bit of fun. It's not a serious tool. So I had a good go at editing this footage that we shot on a bike ride up to the playground on the Insta phone app, but I just found the precision wasn't there for me. I just need a bit more control over my editing. So what I ended up doing was transferring the footage over to my computer, onto my laptop, onto Final Cut Pro and edited in there. And actually the quality is really not bad at all. Look at how lovely and deep blue that sky is. I did obviously color correct it, but that's what you want to see, isn't it? You don't want to see flat ungraded footage. I just found that reframing, that doing hyperlapses, almost anything apart from possibly Tiny Planet is so much easier on the computer, especially if you're using proxy files. Proxy files are lower resolution, so smaller files that your computer will find a lot easier to use. You do not need a high-end computer to edit 360 footage. It's quite simple to do if you use proxy files. 
One thing I did notice though about the footage from the Insta360 is the stitch line in this bright sunlight here. If you look carefully, you can see from the upper lens to the lower lens, there is a difference in the exposure. The upper lens obviously exposed to the sunlight is much brighter and you can definitely then see the stitch line between the lower lens. That can be sorted out with a firmware update, but there's obviously always gonna be some kind of compromise. The sound is still absolutely horrible, even with the latest firmware update. And the only thing to bear in mind, look at that skin tone there again, even in bright sunlight it's not as good as the GoPro Fusion it looks pasty and regardless of how much color correction you do you can't get it right. So look my conclusion is this the Insta360 ONE X produces some very decent footage but I do not think it is as good as the GoPro Fusion footage. The one thing I would say is that you're paying a lot less for the Insta360 ONE X. This camera is almost certainly worth the money compared to the GoPro Fusion. You're paying a lot more for the GoPro Fusion for what is definitely an improvement in image quality, but whether it's worth it for you is another matter. You have to balance the cost against the difference in image quality. I have no doubt that the GoPro Fusion has better image quality, but it's a question of price and this is a lot cheaper. It's a lot lighter, it's a lot easier to carry around and possibly it's a lot easier to edit footage if all you're going to do is one quick shot and upload to Facebook, YouTube or Instagram. Also worth remembering that GoPro have had some problems with software development. We don't know whether we're going to see a GoPro Fusion 2. We don't know whether we're going to see any updated firmware or any updated software. However, we know that Insta are right behind the Insta360. They've got a good software team. They do release updates regularly. So that is another thing to consider. There are certain things about the Insta360 that you cannot improve. Another thing I noticed the other day is it's really difficult to get the micro SD card out. You need another implement to press in. You can't, you, unless you've got really long fingernails, you can't get the micro SD card out. Now that isn't something they can solve with a firmware update. However, the software either on the phone or on the computer can be improved and will be improved no doubt in the months to come. So that's it for my review of the Insta360 ONE X. The GoPro Fusion is better but costs a lot more money. This is well worth it if you don't want to spend big bucks. Thanks very much for watching. If you found this video useful, interesting, helpful, if it's made a decision easier about whether or not you're going to buy the 360 ONE X or the GoPro Fusion or any other 360 camera, do let me know in the comments down below. Do subscribe to the Film My Run YouTube channel. Remember, I'm a runner and I use the 360 ONE X and the GoPro Fusion for running video so do subscribe to the channel do watch some of my real world marathon and ultra marathon running videos with that thanks very much for watching take care and we'll see you for another review next time bye bye